Hello, salam, bocha, hosh, omadid. Welcome to the Monday stream of La Fluent de Simon. My name is Plumas and I'm going to be your host for this afternoon of language, games and the Sassanians. Hosh, omadid, you're very much welcome to be here. I am very pleased to see you. Who do we have here? Hello, Nasa Ros. Hello, Victorian guy. Hello, Typhoon. How are you, bocha, Tutori, Chekhabar? How the week can be. I hope the weekend was good, and I also hope that your start of the week is also good. Thank you so much to all the people who joined the community and followed the channel lately. Also, thank you to the people who subscribed to the channel. I need a big thing I need to say before that I forget. Uh, Salam Naim <laughs> to Tori. Uh, I'll be your host today, as I, I as if every day there was a new person on the screen. I mean. Maybe for all the people. <laughs> Thanks to Plumas Streams, the Mondays are oh, Liz Mondays. Oh, that is them. Thank you so much for your kind words. I was gonna say that something is coming to Twitch next uh, next month, which is called September. And September means that all the prices of the subscriptions are gonna be dropped down by two pounds, two euros if you see me uh, from Europe. I think, and uh, that means whereas we are going to receive the same money as uh, streamers you can afford more subscriptions uh, for the channel so in case you want to either subscribe to the channel if you don't have an amazon prime account uh, you can do this for uh, this month and also if you want to gift a subscription now not now but starting in september is going to be cheaper uh i will see because it's not up yet like the prices are not up yet but definitely they're gonna just tone down one a couple of yeah couple of books something like that but thank you uh, so so much to everyone who's already considered and and thank you last but not least to my lovely family on patreon my patrons have my back and they knew of this they knew this was happening beforehand if you also want to have access early access to the content of the streams if you want to support the channel and if you want to get access to you know extra content school to content and join the discord thank you <laughs> no, soy Rose. you can join our patreon and support the this project on patreon from two euros and a lot you can help me with so now all the presentations have been done without further ado let's just let's just welcome this new stream this is a stream i've been thinking of doing for a long time like seriously for a very long time because i really like age of empires i mean i've been playing age of empires since i was a little girl and my favorite is age of empires 2 the medieval quote unquote uh, pot and uh, i really like it i've been playing recently a lot like um an unhealthy amount of hours and and uh, this is something very interesting because um, you know i since um i became a persian student because i mean there's a lot of things i have to say before starting but just bear with spare me a minute <laughs> Since I became a Persian student, I had not played Age of Empires. I recently got into it back again because I upgraded my computer and because I got it, basically. And I got people to play it with, which is always fantastic. I really enjoy playing online with my friends. And I mean, if you were here, you know that we've organized a couple of games. Uh, those have been in Spanish, though. I don't have anyone who's um, an English speaker. I don't have anyone who speaks English. Uh, if you are an English speaker and you're willing to play with me, please. Let me know. I just don't have any uh, any friends that I know of yet that want to play Age of Empires with me in English. So I was saying that since I became a Persian student, I could appreciate the Sassanids differently. The Sassanians are supposedly the Persians that appear in this game in the Age of Empires franchise. And, you know, I could understand them. Or could I? Some of the things were clear to me, to my ears, very clear, and some others, not at all. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I played a very chilled game and I explored and I talked to you through the sentences, the villagers, the units say, and just talking a little bit, is this Persian? What kind of Persian it is? Is it anything similar, like remotely similar to what the Sasanians used to speak? Is it made up? Is it a mixture of different things? What is that, Victoria? I must recognize I've never felt really attached to these kind of games. It's okay. I mean, it's absolutely no problem. Each to their own, as they say. So, thus, uh, when I came uh, with the... I, I come up with the idea of doing something like that. I think it could be very, very funny since uh, some of the... I mean, I bring the most hilarious anecdote because... <laughs> Because of you, Martin, yes, I mean, I am not... <laughs> I'm still learning Persian, and some things still sound a little... 
different and a little difficult to my ears because that's another thing, another disclaimer to make to myself. I am by no means a Persian native speaker, but I'm a Persian student. And the Persian in Native Empires game is not that difficult to understand if you know the basics more or less, but we shall discover that, don't we? Uh, so we're going to start up the game. Uh, you need to give me a couple minutes because I need to prepare, I need to change the language settings and also... Um, all right, so we're going to play a very chill game because today we're going to talk about language. We're not going to beat, I mean, I am going to beat the machine because I'm going to put it in ridiculously low um, difficulty because it's just like, I really want to talk about this. We're going to be in the, like, the analysis thing. I would love to do this with another person, but as I'm saying, I don't know of anyone English speaker that wants to play with me. So until the time comes, I shall remain waiting. Um, so... First thing is first, the headphones. <laughs> and second is second, you need to hear things. So, dee -dee -dee -dee. hands up if you also love the music of this game. So, you should be able to hear it now. Can you hear Age of Empires? They don't say it, but I wish they did. Can you hear the music? Music, yay! I really like the music of this game, like really. I'm playing Age of Empires 2. 2! <laughs> I'm playing Age of Empires uh, 2 Definitive Edition. And. Uh... Hey Plumas, why does the notification of the stream say to port? Aha! You shall see. You shall see. It's part of the anecdote I'm bringing. To you. All right, so wait, I need to... Where is... Where is it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we have it. So, <laughs> here we have it, Age of Empires, and we are going to do single player. I'm going to do a skirmish, and I'm going to be... The... Oh, yes, I'm going to be the Persians. Mm, did you know already, game? So we are going to close these two, and we... Difficulty, standard, easiest. Ah, don't know. I think I'm going to go with easiest, but again, because, I mean, it's not that I need to prove to you that I can play, um, like, extreme. No, but we play, let me tell you something, Victorian. Um, <laughs> go vegan, go home. Exactly. We played, uh, me and uh, David Morenza from the Eighth Historian, recently we played in a two, it was a team, a two of us against two AAs, both in difficult, it's just like, <laughs> like in, in, um, in hard, and they mopped the floor with the two of us because we, we played against the same thing, but they were not in the same team. It was a team of the two of us and then two separate teams with the IAs. <laughs> and then we said, no, it's not fair. We beat them kind of easily. What don't, why don't we put them on the same team, both of them? <laughs> and they swept and mopped the floor with our guts. It was, it was just bad. So, because today we're going to talk about language, we are going to put this easy and I'm going to choose... Who should we fight against? Because this is not really going to be a fight against, but who should we have as the enemies? Because I don't see... Mm, maybe the Saracens? The Slavs? No, the Spanish? <laughs> so chokers on me. What do you think? China's is like... Oh... The bison times? Oh, the Spaniards. The Spaniards is a good shout, but the bison times, Eva. The bison times! Yes. Romani to the It's gonna be the bison times. Yes. Um, yeah. And what color do you want them to be wearing? Because I'm gonna stick with the, with the pinkish, pink, purple ish one. <laughs> you will see. You will not be disappointed. So, what color? Do you want the Byzantines to wear? We have blue, red, pretty bright green, yellow, really beautiful because purple cannot be. I'm wearing purple. I'm the Persians. I'm the Sassanids. <laughs> what color do you think it would appear better for them? I think a blue because it's the closest one to purple. Not really sure though. Blue. Oh, you're not on my team. Absolutely not. You're not on my team. Like, can you imagine? No. So, <laughs> so, um, 
you don't have a color preference, all right? Then I'll pick it. Uh, I like blue. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it blue. Yeah. So the first thing that I would like to comment upon is this. Uh, this little thing over here. Why is this actually? Pew, 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 pew. Oh. God bless the chroma. Um, what is this? Um, oh, Pichu, thank you for the soup. Thank you so much. 10 months supporting the project. Thank you so, so much, Pichu. May the sun be with you. So I want to talk about this. What is this? Why did they choose this thing? Oh, thank you, Ricardo, for that fellow. Why did you choose this as the, as the main banner, as the symbol of the Sasanians? And to what extent is this something that's historically accurate? Well, you will be happy to hear that it's super accurate and it's uh, really actually a very nice symbol. However, however, it entitles some problems. Thing is, probably if you Google Simurg, that is the name of the bird, like the, the project this is named after a bird, you know, the bird Simurg, if you Google it, you will see this. She's not Simurg. In fact, we don't know who she is, but because of a misinterpretation of the Avestan text, in fact, the Pahlavi, Middle Persian ones. So, I mean, this is a little bit long, but I'm going to make the long story short. So, this symbol, this pattern, appears all over Sasanian clothing, and it turns to be very popular from the 5th century onwards on Sasanian clothing and Sasanian medallions. This composite creature that has uh, the head of a lioness, has paws with claws, also two wings sprouting from its shoulders, and the tail of sometimes a fish, sometimes a peacock. I hope the money can help you buying new, uh, a game newer than Age of Empires. Oh, shut up. Shut the front door. I love Age of Empires. Never gonna stop playing. So, this thingy, this thingy here, is a real symbol. For the Sasanians, that's completely fair. You can see it everywhere. However, it is not Simorg. Let me tell you what happened. So, around 1930 something, 33 if I'm not mistaken, there was a woman, a scholar named Camilla Trevor. She uh, was Russian, I think, and um, she was working with the uh, from, with literature from the Zoroastrian uh, tradition, Zoroastrian literature. And one of the many books that we have in Zoroastrian tradition is uh, it's a kind of a world encyclopedia called the Bundahesan. And in the Bundahesan, see what comes after the Sasan, he's like, I will get there, don't worry. So in the Bundahesan, they spoke about the, the bird Sen, Senmurv. Senmurv means the bird Sen or Saena, which is one of the high deities in Zoroastrianism. She is a very powerful bird that's in charge of maintaining the prosperity and the fertility of the land. Sen or Saena is literally, it's just the ancestor of Simurg, but she's a bird. However, in this text, in the Bundahesan, Senmurv is mentioned as having three elements. Camilla Trava interpreted these three elements as the bird, quote unquote, the bird of the three natures. And that led to think that this beauty over here was indeed the Simurg, the Senmurg. Why? Because it has mammal, as it is a lion, it has birds, as it has wings, and also the fish tail, therefore the uh, waterkin. So then the confusion started. There's a lot of pieces in a lot of museums that still represent these and the, you know, the, the little information underneath, just like the tiny text underneath the pieces, it still says Senmurv. It's been proved by archaeologists and specialists on the subject that this, this friend, she's not Senmurv. Simurg, Senmurv, they were always birds. Always, all the time. And also, if you think about it, it makes zero, zero sense to have a bird then a composite creature and then a bird again in the Shohname, because yes, the only moment we have Simurg as Simurg in Persian is in the Shohname, which was written in 1010, a while after the Sasanians. So, what is this? We don't have actually a name for it yet, but it's a creature who represents prowess, strength, royal power and glory and um there's a lovely article by the italian archaeologist matteo comparetti where he demonstrates that this creature is indeed not the senmurv not the senmurv and i'm gonna say this as many times as is required because as i say as i mentioned museums still get this wrong there's a lot of pieces with this lovely creature that are identified as senmurv 
And it's not. It's just not her. Sen Murv, the name. Sen Murv, the bird. Sen. How is it going to be a lion or a dog sometimes? I've seen these sometimes identified as a dog, the, the face. It really depends on the, on, on the relief we're talking about. In the Zoroastrian course that you recommended, I learned that that was similar. Yes, yes. And I need to type, I'm, I'm going to need to type a very beautiful email to the person in charge of this course by SOAS. Because yes, it's so integrated in more than thought that SOAS offered a course on Zoroastrianism and they show these as Simurg. And it is not. It is absolutely not Senmurv. Never was. In fact, we believe that this motif was imported from Central Asia and was not Iranian per se. It didn't come from the Iranian plateau, rather from Central Asia, because also it was big. It was very popular in zones like Sogdia and Bactria. So we believe that's where it comes from. And we can see a creature like this flying over uh, Rostam in the paintings of Panjikert. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, we're going to have a live stream in the future. When I have more time, when I submit my thesis, give me a chance, spare me a minute. Um, but yeah, I wanted to comment on this first, because you're going to see her identified as Simur. You know what this is? This is what in Spain we do when we want to mean a lot. Like this. Many, many times. Museums, scholars, renowned scholars still believe that this little creature is San Morv. She's not. And I'm really sorry that we don't have a proper name for it. My friend and brother in arms, Nadine from the project, the reenactment project, Eran Uturan, calls her the pseudo San Morv, which is better but still doesn't do it for me. I wanted uh, him to be named Eustachio. We're working on that. <laughs> but yeah, it's just for you to know what is this, what you're looking at, and uh, why it's not what you may have been told it is. Now, um, that is a first bit of knowledge, because remember, this is an informative game. The map. Uh, I want something with water, because I want the villagers to be able to to say things i don't think there's iran is it no there's byzantium but i don't want to play there oh god no i don't want to play in byzantium like absolutely not the philippines central america we don't even we don't have central asia we will have the aral sea no i don't want to play in the aral sea <sighs> I mean, I'm open to suggestions, so you can you can seriously please do something, uh, do do something, say something. Um, I don't want to play in Africa either. I really like that they say meat is, and it's literally the Arabian Peninsula because Orientalism. I mean, there's a lot to say and to discuss about these games take on Oriental civilization. It's like a lot. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get into it today. Where should we? Maybe I'll just. We go to standard. What can we find here? Arabia, no. Black Forest, nope. Uh, arena, no. Coastal Forest, no one could be. But because I want, I want something with water, so I can, I can show you. Crossroads, no. Four Lakes, no. Golden, but, 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 but the hamburger. <laughs> I really like that one. High doubt, no. The high. Mm. Do we have something like Mongolia? We used to have Mongolia. Where is it? Am I not uh, here? Ugh, no, not really. Not really happy about this one. No mat, no. Um, I mean, I want it to be as historically accurate as possible, but they're not giving, they're not giving me much. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go with this one with coastal forest only because it has like a little bit of water and um, rivers look really good. Matt, I haven't seen it. Which one? Just rivers? This one. Yeah, I can do. Yeah, let's just play rivers. All right, so. Uh, as I say, today we're going to talk about language, and by language I mean the Persian that these people supposedly spoke. So, um, we're going to do an audio test, that's the reason I put the, the A 
AI uh, on easy is because I don't want to stress. I mean, this is not a proper, but it's like a walkthrough, a tour. And uh, yeah, it was, if all's looking good, let's just start the game. Basil Boyoanis. It's very nice to meet you, pal. I'm gonna place my fingers on the keyboard. Besides Kamandaran in your castle. Okay, I didn't read it. All right, I mean, so we have, we have cows. <laughs> okay, right, let's do a test first. I think it's really a bit low. I'm gonna put this one up. Maybe I need to turn it up a little bit in here. How do you hear it? Can you can you hear him? It's really important that you do. Sit low. Okay, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna put it okay, a little bit more. Is it hundred percent? Bit low. Okay, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna put. Wait, wait. See, this is the reason I wanted the uh, I in his ear. Right, so I'm gonna put like a little bit high in here, and I'm gonna tone mine a little bit up because I can't hear anything basically. Oh my dear. What about this? Salam. Salam. Ari. Ari. Hi, three barrels. Oh my dear. Can you hear it? Ari. Salam. But is it good? Can you hear her properly? Oh my dear. Ari. Can you hear the ambulance? <laughs> You know, if you're a regular of this channel, you know that we're entitled one ambulance and one very loud motorcycle <laughs> per stream. Much better. Sorry. Okay, let's start with a thing. A Persian ambulance. So, what language, supposedly, are these people speaking? Because we are talking about the Sasanians here. But... Amade. Amade. Sorry. Ar <laughs> so, supposedly, they're speaking Persian. I mean, you can, you can just go... Go around the world, my dear. So, supposedly, these people are speaking something the Sasanians would speak. But what is that exactly? What is the Sasanians? What is what the Sasanians spoke? Sasanians spoke something. <laughs> no, I don't think the Sasanians said Salam. No, because Salam is an Arabic uh, loan word. So, what they are speaking is Persian or Farsi. Which is a language that now is spoken in Afghanistan and Pakistan and also in Iran. It's Iran's uh, official language. And, and they, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but clearly the people who recorded the voices are not native speakers because they say some things in a funny way. And uh, some of them are really clear, some of them are don't, not clear at all. Ah, and Tajikistan, thank you name June, exactly, and Tajikistan. So it's a little bit tricky to understand them sometimes. I don't, as a student, I sometimes do not understand. And that's the reason in the map, in the art where you can say uh, to Khor, I will tell you why. So let's start the basics. Amade. Amade. Amade is actually very well said. It means ready. Salam. Salam, which means hello. Ari. Ari. Okay. I have no idea. Hola, like, no know. idea. Salam. Meemar. Meemar means. Well, I guess, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to keep on doing things. Uh, salam means oh, hello. And Ari. Ulufijamkon. <laughs> and Ari is the way they have of saying uh, yes. Salam. But. Meemar. But. It's not correct exactly because yes in Persian you can say it two ways. One is bale, which is very close to Spanish, bale, and then are. Are Ari. They say Ari, I don't know what. And you can hear Amade. Salam. Ari. Ari is I don't understand. Maybe this is a dialect and maybe this is a conscious choice or not. I have no idea. But the three stop, uh, three passive Ooh, things they say Hello. is Ari, Amade, which means ready, Are, which is yes, as in like, yes, and um, Are, no, like, yes, I okay. go. Amade. Amade, which is like ready, I'm ready, Ari, and, uh, and Salom. Sorry, that one, that was the one I am leaving for. So, Amade. Sahih. Sahih means correct. 
Ari. Are again, which is not Ari, is Are. Mikonam. Mikonam. Mikonam means uh okay. The verb kardan means to do. But there's a lot of things you can't express with kardan because there's a lot of um which one? Ah, oh, sahi. <laughs> yeah, sahi is Arabic. Yeah, because the Persian way of saying correct in Persian is dorost. Dorost, I think correct. And um, uh, sahi. Sahi again. Mikonam. Mikonam. I was saying that the verb kardan is uh, a verb that you can use for a lot of things. Since, since is um. Amade. Amade. Memor. Memar, memar. So I, I need. To, sorry, I'm just like I'm getting excited ahead of myself. This is a very, very poor class. So, salam, salam, azizam. So, um, Ori. Kardan is a verb that means to do, but is the second part of a lot of compound verbs. Persian has a lot, a lot, uh, compound of uh, compound verbs, and and, um, you can find it like all over. Honestly, like honestly, all over. Uh, the Persian. Oh, we found a cow. Oh, beautiful. Black cows. Cow in Persian is gov. And, um. Ori. But in this case. Chupo not mikonam sahi. Ori sahi. Ori mikonam. Mikonam. Mikonam means I am doing it. Like, I'm doing something. Mikonam. Sahi. Sahi. Ori. Now, another one. Me'mar. Me'mar literally means constructor, like the person that constructs. Um, and it's another line from Arabic. Normally, all the uh, words with ein or rein that come from Arabic. Normally, not all of them. Hmm. We found another gov. Indeed, we did. All right, so. Amade. Why does it. Amade, Amidu Namazism. So, why is it that on the. <laughs> Right, so I want uh, I want you to tell me what you hear here. Chupur, 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 sahi, chupur. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. So actually, what she is saying is chupur. But I, the first time I played this, I understood chubhor. Chubhor would literally mean to eat wood. Because chub is Ori. wood. Here, chubhor. Chubhor means, um, oh, the person like, oh, wood, uh, wood chopper. So it's really interesting because in, in Persian, in this game, so, they are not, um, they are not describing the action they're talking about the person they say constructor they say woodcutter they say uh, cattle gatherer so yeah it's it's really interesting to, to see the the different Salon. takes uh, of it um what else Sahi. Sahi. Mikona. Mikona. Sahi. all right the one with the um... i'm gonna put the music a little bit down Sahi. Olufe jam kon. Olufe jam. Olufe jam kon. It's a compound expression with two. Olufe means forash, actually. And jam kon means to gather. So what he's doing is gathering the harvest. So um, in this case, he used an imperative. Like, I'm doing it, uh, do it, to do something. But yeah, olufe means forash. Do you know that word? Yeah, like, oh, hello, Azizam. Do you see you there? Uh, what else, what else, what else? We have the tube, oh, we have these, uh, the cows. I'm gonna save you. Come here, there's a gov. Gove kuchak. Be a inja. All right, so now we have, um, I'm gonna put her like very far away. Mikona. Mikoni, Midunam, um, which is a uh, uh, again Olufe Jam Kon. It says the same, like just gathering the hello Romam. Ori, uh, we're gonna do something. Oh yeah, um, 
Ulufe jam corn. Ulufe jam corn again means to gather the harvest or like the food. I mean, ulufe is forage, and uh, yeah, like this. Uh, other ways of saying food, for example, is grasa. And um, I'm really sorry if you have like a specific question for a specific uh, Persian word and I don't know. I think there might be some Persian, like native Persian speakers on the stream. They should be. They told me they were going to show up. So we can help you with that. Memar. Memar means again constructor. The R is terrible. I know. Are we do not name. Memar. I don't understand it either. Amade. Amade. There's a gold here. Memar. Me again, Memar it means like. How do you how do they call the fish? Oh yeah, the fish! I forgot about the fish. So Does he reach? Mohigir. Alright. He says Mohi Gir. Mohi Gereftan means to fish. So basically Gereftan means to get. Mohi is fish. And uh, what he's Ari. doing. Listen. Mohi gir. Mohi gir. Mohi gir. Mohi gir. Mohi gir. Like, get the fish. Getting the fish. Gir is the active participle of, of uh, Gerifton. And actually, I need another person because I was going to do something different. But, uh, yeah. It's like, merci. Khoesh <laughs> mikunam. Do you study Persian ever? Uh, what else was I doing? What else? What else? We said Meymar so. already. Meymar. Meymar, which is constructor, the person who... Oh, the, the beast, this one. Ari, Ari, Madanchi, Madanchi, Madanchi. Madanchi means miner, like a person who goes to the miner. Like, oh, I studied, but it was a long time ago. I just remember some auxiliary verbs. I'm pretty sure you Persian is still very good. Uh, who's who's oh, job legs? Uh, what else could we do? Um, mm, we said Memar already. Mikonam. Memar. I mean, actually, yeah, Memar is builder or constructor. Uh, what do I tell you to do? Salam. Salam, Azizam. Meymar. Meymar again, constructor. Who's Salam. doing nothing? Oh, yeah. Meymar. Mm. So, okay, I can use this, uh, I can use this pause <laughs> uh, to tell you things about it. So, the Persian, the Sasanians are the civilization that they chose for, uh, well, not exactly the Sasanians because you have Persians supposedly recovering from the Sasanian Empire to the Ghasnavids and the Seljuks and stuff. The Seljuks are no Persian, but whatever. And um, uh, what they are oh, doing is using modern Persian. But let me tell you something. This is not the language the Sasanians yeah, used to speak. What was spoken in the Sasanian Empire? What was it? What's the gist? So. What was spoken? Where's my scout? All right, something you should know about. Oh no, it's on the other side of the river. Can we cross? Yeah, we can cross on foot. Thank Ahura Mosda. Oh yeah, I can comment on that too. So basically, the Sasanians spoke something that we call Middle Persian, and the script that they use is Pahlavi. But, but I am ridiculously going slow in this one. Um, but we have no idea how it was pronounced. And, and, um, uh, well, we don't have any like recorded versions of Pahlavi, and it had nothing to do with Persian. So, what happened? How come they are speaking Persian? Because actually, the medieval Persian is quite close, not exactly the same because all languages evolve, but it's quite close to the modern Persian, the Persian you can speak today in Tajikistan, in Iran, in Afghanistan. So, what happened? What happened was it. that if you know of this, um, no, no, you, you, chubhor. Chubhor. <laughs> you eat wood. Ari? Oh. 
system. You should not. Chubhor. You borrow Chubhor. Um, so what happened was that uh, the Arabs came, the Arab ar uh, armies came, and and Arabic was started to be used as the language of administration, which is something very important for the Persians, by the way. Uh, bureaucracy and all that jazz. So. Um, what they did is, uh, in the 8th century, there was uh, this movement of, so to speak, recovery of the original Persian language. And um, that led to a lot of poets and a lot of linguists and a lot of scholars to start using a new language they called Persian. And this is modern Persian. And um, this is what they speak, actually. This is what these villagers over my head are speaking. And... Um, uh, no, the Sasanians did not speak these at all, like absolutely. It, some words possibly will be close to it, it was like slightly close, but mostly, um, no, this is not something Sasanians would speak. Other Persians, for sure, the Ghaznavids, for example, would sp speak something. Oh, well, actually, I don't know, because the Ghaznavids are from like Turkish origin. Yeah, like, Turkic, not Turkish. Turkic origin, they're close to the zone of India. The, Sama the Samanids and the Buyids, maybe perhaps. Like, these are uh, dynasties that were in a. Whoops! Sorry. Memor. Memor. Yare. I need you to do this. Oh, the other day I built the most beautiful imitation of the Medina of Fez, Rabat, and Qaira one, and I forgot to take a picture of it. I am the worst! Well, Kuja, 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 Miri. I am not, yeah, I'm not playing with strategy in, in this one. Uh, Chupor. No, actually. Oh yeah, Chupor. Chupor. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on saying Chupor, but no, it's Chubor. Chubor, which means wood chopper, wood cutter. Okay, um, uh, but yeah, it's it's really interesting to me how you can see that the people um, speaking in here, the people recording it. I am not sure they were native speakers. I'm like, definitely not sure. Oh, you crossed the river. Good job. Good job for you. I'm very proud. Um, what was I saying? Uh, but yeah, this is not uh, this is not what the Sasanians would be. She's a lumberjack and she's okay. Are. Amade, Ari. Chera Amade. Salam. Salam chi a. Ari. Memor. Salam. Pues mor chupor. Chupor. I need. Ari. A lot of things. Ari. Sahi. I thought ancient Persian was very similar to modern Persian, not like modern Spanish and Sid Spanish. No, that is modern Persian is what we call to the language that currently is spoken. And that was an effort, as I said, there was this movement of a recovery of the of um, of Persian original Persian culture because it was a reaction towards the Arab culture that was being quote unquote imposed on uh, the previous empire that was the Sassanids. Oh. In fact, in the Hello. school that I used to learn Persian, they divided the, um, the, the years, the academic years, were seven. By year seven, the students were able to read Ferdowsi, Hafez, Rudaki, and um, Hello. yeah, Hello. this is the Persian they, they uh, speak. Oh, we can research Castle Age then. Meet him! There we go! So, yeah. It's uh, it would be close to that. However, it not be exactly the same as I'm saying uh, all language ever. But this one is like this. This uh, um, this is not the language of the Sassanids whatsoever. So other thing, do you see this here? Can you tell me, you that you've been following my project, that you are educated, brilliant, but char? Can you tell me what this is? Here, close to my own. Oh, this one, like this shoulder. What is this? Ferdowsi's Persian knows a language. Well, you should see her face. <laughs> that was the master of words. Oh, and Saadi. Saadi was another master of, of the language, for sure. I should... Yeah, we need, we, need a, we need one of these. We need the infantry. We need uh, the far. 
Good job, Naim June. Exactly. This here is the fur because Naim knows as a very ah ah. Thank you, Eva, for saying that. Um, actually, no, no, but but it is said a lot. Like, fairly a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. This, this, well, actually, you can't see it. This, this is a Hudo Mars dog, which is not. Can we see it anywhere else? Mm, I was sure somewhere it appeared like a big, oh, it must have been another screen. Um, so, yeah, it is not. It is not a Hudo Mars dog, but it's a symbol. We're gonna talk about architecture in another video, but I'm gonna comment like, upon it a little bit. So, um,. I've done some stuff in your streams. Thank you. That means ah, that means my job means for something. Um, so not enough food. Me do nam, Uh So yeah, what has been said is that this figure represents Ahura Mazda when actually it doesn't. So you know the oh, official dear. religion of the Sasanians. This is for sure. Like we know, hundred percent true. Was Zoroastrianism. And uh, Zoroastrianism has a lot of symbols, one of them being this. This is what we call the Farbahar. The Farbahar is a symbol that represents kingship glory, like heavenly glory that's bestowed upon the ruler and gives them the... How to say this? Like the unconditional... Um, unconditional and undeniable right to reign. That's the Farbahar. However, because it's closest or closeness to Zoroastrianism, it is told, it's said that um, uh, it is said that it's a representation of Ahura Mazda himself. When it's not, it's not. It's a symbol for the glory. This is the reason why we find this symbol at Persepolis before, like up on kings. And uh, whoops, yeah. Sorry. As I say, I'm not Name really on. pending on. <laughs> on what I am doing. Um, in the art of Persia, they said that wrong also. Not really. In the art of Persia, they, on the first episode, they said it properly. And the second, they, they screwed up. I have no idea why. Hi, Louise. Um, the other day, my uncle gave a talk about Zoroastrianism, and I was happy because I already knew most of the things he said from your streams. Azizan, that's brilliant. Did you, I'm pretty sure you had a great conversation with your uncle. So, yeah. The Far of a Heart represents a man with these uh, winged... You see, it's actually very nice, I can point. This, like, these wings and this tail and this disc. The man is actually holding the disc of sovereignty. Salon. And that is a disc Chukur. that in the Sasanian relief you see being passed from one king to the other, sometimes by Ahura Mazda himself. And what does that Ari. mean? That means that Ahura Mazda is granting said Madanchi. king the right to reign, the ring of sovereignty, the ring of kinship, if you may. Um, Salam. Salam. We need people from here. And I want I want a few peeps so we can continue Salam. with our language learning. Um Memor. I mean Kabbal really did doesn't say they don't say Memor. much. So Memor. Amode. Amode. Oh, we have um No, this is university. I want I want the most the most oh here uh yeah this is really yeah, fun as well that they they chose the sasanians and oh, uh, <laughs> they gave them a most uh because yeah it's a big mixture like is this like um how to express this is this um Salam. a very complex Salam. but also at the same time very fun market of oriental things that persian quote unquote things all right so farman. a new word farman does someone know what Farman means? Amade. Amade, we know already. Ari. Are. Are. Yeah, it's painful to hear the Ari. Farman. So, Farman means order. And it's a question. Farman, like orders? Ari. Amade. Farman. Farman. Amade. Mikonam. Mikonam. I am doing it. Ari. Are. Yes. Mikonam. Mikonam. Ari, Mikona, Ari. Did you say Sahi? I'm pretty sure you did. Mikona. All right, no, they, they don't say Sahi. <laughs> but you know that Sahi is um. Uh, correct. Ari. Yeah, Madan. Another thing. When I first heard this. Salam, Madanchi, Madanchi, Madanchi. Madanchi, who is minor, I. <laughs> I understood Baden June, which means aubergine. 
because I'm deaf and stupid. Um, what else do we need? Oh, we need a castle, but not yet, though. So, you're gonna... Madanchi. Madanchi. Mm. I don't know if I'm actually gonna go full on this, but... Oh, you belongs to the castle age. I am very, very, very... Oh! Someone... Oh, sorry, Eva. Like the my my moderator doesn't allow cat letters. What else? Mikonim. Oh, yeah, I am okay. Uh, yeah, we we are a non cap um, a non cap channel here. <laughs> what else? What else? I mean, when we have an army, of course, they I can show you like. Uh, Hamle. Hamle. Don't, don't go. Hamle. Hamle. Hamle means attack. Hori. <laughs> Hori. Memo. Amode. Memo. Need to move my village a little bit. Yeah. So Hamle means attack. <laughs> so we need more food. This is a hungry army, it's just like I am. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, some of the things that I can tell you about. Salon. Oh, the Hamlet thing. We need a castle. Over a castle on the hill. Yeah, I mean, this is the castle the Persians have. Memo. It is not great. Uh, I mean, I can comment briefly. Sorry. If you want a porn architecture. It's not great. It's like, oh. Hmm. Memo. I know I am June. People should not shout. <laughs> Unless not in my house. Um, so yeah, I... Uh, the castle's not great. It's not great. And the architecture generally is not great either. Oh, I need more houses. Okay, so... Shoma. If you... Please. Uh, the architecture's not great. Is the Kamo... Uh, it's, like, it's like a random European castle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But these, the architecture of the Persians is the same as the Turkish, as the Saracens, and as the uh, Berbers from the north of Africa. So they have these coat, this taint that they put on uh, um, on the Persian civilization, and um, these these Muslim slash Oriental civilizations. And by Oriental, in this case, I mean the Middle East, not uh, Oriental like the Far Orient, and. Um, Standard Orient, <laughs> yes, more or less, yeah, it's standard, you, you, you just chill, uh, just the, the, the standard Muslim architecture, whatever that is, because this mosque actually is a mixture of a lot of things, it's not just, uh, um, yeah, Shoma, be a enjoy the fun. <laughs> Relic Migiri. And this one. Oh, borrowed feathers. That's a beautiful name. Thank you for the follow. So basically, um, you finished? All right. So all oh, the university. We don't have the university. Same with the same goes with the university. Like it's basically north. A mixture between Moroccan architecture. Andalusian architecture, some things from Iran, but not many of them. It's just, um, mm. see, like the, mm. just not great. It's just, just Amadeus. not, not great. However, is what we have. I mean, if you know what, it gives me. It is a little pity, um, at least for me, that. Um, they Memo. did not put more effort into creating. Memo. these civilizations because um oh what am i doing <laughs> because some of them are incredibly detailed and oh dude you're gonna die like you're very strong you're gonna die um the murder holes yes and masonry as well and ballistics and um i guess again it's a real pity um the thumb ring oh this beautiful that they have here the thumb ring the thumb ring is an element that you wear on your thumb when you are shout like not shouting shooting with a bow to protect your thumb from the string of the bow so basically you when you are doing the thumb grasp like this 
you holding the string with the, the, inner, um, the inner part of the hand like this and you just use your other fingers to secure the grip and to protect it and then you just whoop and let go. That means your thumb gets Body. exposed uh, to some Body. damage and some some um, injuries if you don't protect it and that's the reason thumb Sorry. ring exists. I really like Sorry. that they have thumb ring um, technology in here because it's a thing Memo. not only them, not Memo. only the Persians, the Memo. Mongolians also do and um, who else? Uh, the Mongolians, the Tartars, the Cubans, basically every civilization that's very strong with uh, um, mounted uh, archers. So yeah, what else I was doing? I mean, I'm just like, nope. I'm just researching things for the sake of researching, but actually I don't know if we can Salon. afford that. Uh, two, yeah, another one. Memo. Are there any other relics around that we need? Salon. You, you, what exactly are you doing here? Or maybe you had Body. to pick up a relic and you had to just lost. Okay, we're fine. Um, so yeah, the, the architect is not great. Which is a pity, as I'm, as I was saying, because literally, they're all the civilizations that are beautifully researched. And uh, since you are going to, to make the, um, the definite edition, so to speak, we don't have food. Uh, you're gonna make the um, uh, definite edition. You're gonna give it like a, a makeover, and it's gonna look great. Why don't you just do a little Memo. bit of research? Hire what like couple of art historians? We're very like, yeah, we're worth it. Um, so yeah, that's that's actually my my rant about it. What else should we comment upon? Uh, Basically, I want to talk about the language, but I don't know. I think basically that's it. I mean, we have Hamlet and um, and basically we have the Mikonan, the Almade, which means ready. Uh, they're not like, they're not like a lot. <laughs> we don't have like a lot of sentences. Look at them. The elephants. The whole elephant. We need more food, but child, like speed it up, guys. We need... Do you know any fellow art historians that have worked for video games? No. I I am the only one that I know that has worked in video oh, games. Dear. Sorry. <laughs> Do you know of any? Because I would love to meet them. Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't come across any. I know they exist, right? I know they exist. I know they're there. But... Um, oh, my dear. But no... I do this quite a lot, like I, oh, I just, you know, I reconstruct and destroyed things, like, quite often. So Memo. they don't have to move. No, but I would make, it would make a lot of sense that there were more. Some of them, you know that, uh, some of them are, I mean, especially historians, not so many art uh, historians, and less I know of, less to my knowledge. However, it's, um, it, I mean, we're a good incorporation. To it like um, in all honesty um we are what is this oh yeah this is something the oriental again quote unquote oriental muslim civilizations have which is the architecture with strength of all buildings i've got a 10 percent more hit points uh it's always great to protect this if you uh, play with persians um oh by the way do not expect me to be like such a bug like, coach about this game i don't know how you play age of empires whatever the way you play age of empires it's gonna be good. I just wanted to show you the language and to tell you that, yes, the Persians are, um, you know, they, they, um, oh my God, you, but Shah, you're expensive. Oh no. We need to speak things up in here. Holy Choda, you're very expensive. I mean, not so much in here, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, I didn't know the, the elite, the upgrading the elite was this uh, expensive. Everything costs food and like, oh, we need the canals though. Like we do need the canals. Um, oh yes, another one, the Parthian shot. The Parthian, do, do you see it? Yeah, it's just above my head, the Parthian techniques. The Parthian techniques is something, again, all civilizations strongly based in mounted archers have. And this talks about the Parthians, which are another empire based in, in Iran. And uh, the Parthians Body. used to do this trick because it's super difficult to make. I never could accomplish that. 
Well, basically what they do is that they shoot backwards, like the, as they're riding um, the Parthian. <laughs> as the horse gallops frontwards, they turn on the seat and shoot, meaning that they only conduct the horse with their legs. It's crazy difficult. I mean, I, I, I haven't tried it myself, but I've been trying to shoot from the top of a horse. <laughs> and I can tell you, it is not easy, okay? It is absolutely not easy. Um, yeah, for real, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's what they used to do. Not enough gold. I mean, I have enough for nothing. I'm, I'm poor. I'm the poorest shot in the entire earth. Uh, we need more people, actually. Uh, where's the other gold mine? Yeah. Again, no much strategy here. No, we no food. We do not, Baba. We don't have food. We're gonna starve. And accurately too. Hey, Stros, how are you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not just that you are shooting the person from the horse that is moving <laughs> in the opposite direction though you are shooting. Is that you actually get the target? Um, yeah, exactly. This is something that some people don't know because no, uh, not everyone has had the chance to to mount or to have like a, um, uh, the possibility to have a horse, uh, even theory lessons. But your arms are important when you ride, but your legs are more important, like very important. You practically can direct the the horse with your knees, with your thighs, and with your calves if you know how to. Just remind yourself that at this point. Well, not really. At these points, like around the 8th century, there were stirrups. Oh, but a lot, for a lot of centuries, people had ridden without stirrups. Without them, I tell you, but child, oh, like, mm, something to consider, something to bear in mind. Uh, so, let's just hear them speak. Ari? I don't like Ari. <laughs> it's like Are. Amade. Oh, Chupur. I hear Chupor! Chupor? 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 I know it's Chupor, but I hear Chupor! <laughs> Tops Chupor! <laughs> chupor for the way, the are the game, whatever you guys want. Um, what was I doing? I have forgotten. More people, we need more people. Hmm, where are you going? Oh, here. Uh, oh, come on! Ah! Do you guys speak? The host speaks. <laughs> yeah, these are the guys that speak. Are. Are. Mikona. Are. Mikona. I miss that they don't say Sahi. Why don't you say Sahi? I believe the Avars brought stirrups into the arsenal of Eastern Europe in the mid 6th century. The idea then spread slowly throughout from uh, them on. Yeah, possibly, but I, given that this is supposed to be between the 6th and the 15th century, I think that uh, at this point, the, I mean, the Sasanians already like, rode with stirrups. We have some images up for that. Definitely the Buyids, the Samanids, like people from the 9th century onwards, they do ride with stirrups. The Mongols ride with stirrups too. It's like it's, it was a very good like, extended practice after some time. Yeah, and now we're poor. <laughs> um, and now we're very poor. And uh, what did I want? I want. I want it on. I want it all. A couple of these would do. Couple and I'm making three. I can't count. <laughs> I promise. Um, I don't know the elephant. I want elephants. I think I'm gonna skip this and I'm gonna go with them because again, I don't think the, there's gonna be much opposition. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, you. What is this? Oh, Pac-Man. Of course, because the E R, uh, the I A, sorry, knows. They do know, don't they? I'm, the, I'm so used to play with people that it's re it really, it's like psyching me out that I cannot. Uh, just, just, Baba, come back. It's just like you already done your part. It's okay. Cool. Um. Uh, what was I saying? I am so used to play with people that I don't. Um, it's really strange for me not being able to 
to commerce with anyone. Like my my market is just like stopped, and that is very sad, if you ask me. Um. Ari. She. Ari. She shall. Is there anything else you can like? I mean, here you can come here, and you can. Memor. Memor. And you can. Um, oh, forgot it. Oh, how was it? Modern tea. Yeah, you can be modern tea yourselves. Am I overdoing myself? A little. Uh, these. Shekhar. I don't know what that applies in here because Shekhar means break, but. Ah, I haven't shown you what the, the, the hunt. Alright, I need I need two peeps. You too, come here. Um, wait. Uh where's the where's the boar? Oh yeah, here. Well. Did you hear that? Shekarchi. which means to hunt, exactly. Well, actually, Shekarchi means hunter, like the hunter. Shekar Kardan, or it's like, or Shekar is the 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 verb actually. They are so strong. Like it's it's even unfair how strong the 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 bloody mm, um boars are. I think I'm gonna pass on the cavalry thing. Yeah, and we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna bring this because I these, these guys because I want you to hear like the attack thing, the hamle uh, thing. But they don't like that's it. They say are amade uh, farmon, which is order. The elephants just. What's the word? That's a word that most come up often in manuscript, isn't it? Hunter. Um, Yes, but not the ones I work with because I work with Simorg, I work with dragons and uh, Sufi poetry, so not that often, but it does come up sometimes. Um, what is the name in English for the sound the elephant makes? Stros, I'm looking at you. They, they, they what? What, what oh, is what it is. they do? Ari. They, they... Salon. I'm being very honest, I don't know. Oh, uh, the name of stone? Come, come on, I can't believe this. There is no more stone. All right. Memor. Come on, you can't leave me hanging here. Because I know the word in Spanish, but <laughs> I definitely know the, don't know the word in English. Like, absolutely no. So the good thing about the elephants is that they have a lot of stamina and they show us sturdy. But the picker men don't do good to them. So yeah, maybe we need something a little bit more. I need you. Salon. I need you too. Memor. Um, seriously, please, native English speakers, what is the sound the elephant makes? What's the English word for that? Because in Spanish we say barritar. I'm pretty sure you don't say barritar in English. Maybe you do, I don't know. Do you? We're gonna wait on a couple of fellas here. And we're good to go. I think I'm gonna go sending this um, um, from my head. Because, you know, they sure take their time. Yeah, we're gonna. Oh my god, we're gonna destroy them so badly. I didn't even know the word is Spanish. Yeah, in Spanish it's barritar. The elephant, el elefante barrita. That's the proper word. Um, come on, bacha. But I don't know in English. 
And no one wants to tell me. <laughs> Oh no, I really don't think so. Thank you for my follow! Boom! <laughs> Turn one elephant man. What am I sword man? Oh. Ori. Ori. Hamle. 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 Hamle attack. Bejangi. Bejangi. That means fight. Hamle. Bejangi. Bejangi. Fight. Oh come on. Can do better than this. Oh my god, this is so unfair. Look that one over the dictionary or something like the one for the elephant. Was well, something they haven't said yet is the um, is Tamir Kar, which means repair people uh, that repair things. That's it. We are victorious! Yes! I mean, remember, this was in like the easiest mode, and I only played to show you some uh, things about the language. We're going to return to the map. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Eva. Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And uh, we're going to quit the current game and I'm going to return to you as uh, I was before. So, uh, yeah, basically, basically, this was uh, what I wanted to show you. I wanted to talk a little bit about it. What have, what have we learned today, if we have learned anything uh, whatsoever? So. What we have learned is that uh, Persians in this game are a mixture that really like a really wide mixture that goes from the Sasanians to the Rasnavids to sometimes like occasionally the, the Turks, the Turkic people that came around the 12th century. And uh, then you stop there because of course you have the Mongols in another civilization. And that comes from the, I mean, the Mongols in this game are from the 13th century onwards. That is when Temujin or Chinggis Khan was alive and active. Active is a very nice word to use for him. What else? We've learned that in this game they speak modern Persian, which is something that was created around the 8th century by a group of scholars, poets and other people of uh, the Belles Lettres who wanted to have this recovery and this movement of wanting to, yeah, to recover the Persian heritage from what it seems to be a very like a conquest, a cultural conquest the Arab culture was exerting upon Iran. So that's the reason modern Persian came. This is the Persian, these um, uh, these villagers and these fighters were talking, but it's a very modern Persian. And some of it, I'm pretty sure it was not written by uh, native speakers, nor read uh, by native speakers, because the woman, the, the female voice for the villager, is a little bit better, because she says Ari. Um, it's Ari, but never mind. Whereas the other one, the male voice, the the he doesn't properly roll like subtle eyes like Ari. Like that's a very English thing to do. Ari, the re Ari instead of Ari, which the woman does, the man does not. And um yeah, they also don't call the action, they call the person, uh, for example, uh, Shekarchi, which means hunter, uh, Chubor, which means woodcutter or lumberjack. And um, instead of uh, chu, um, instead of shekar, uh, shekar or uh, Shekar Kardan, or um, what's the other one? Ah, oh, the one about the... Um... Ah, I forgot. The one... Like in like th that's what not actually that that was using the 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 con which is like the the imperative. I'm not linguist. I am not a native speaker. I am a person that really loves Persian. <laughs> that's it. It was really strange for me to play this game again and to realize that I could understand them. 
It felt really good. It felt like, you know, this was the payoff of my hard work. Being able to understand the Persians in Age of Empires is the only reason I've been learning so much uh, in the past almost five years. So yeah, I really invite you to look up Persian language. It's a beautiful language. And uh, oh, we've also learned that the symbol for the, for the Sasanians, for the Persians, is not uh, Senmurv, although you will be presented... Um, you will, you will be presented to her as Simur or Semur. Now you know that is not correct. If you want to read a little bit further, I uh, the um, the article by Matteo Comparetti is up online. If you put Matteo Comparetti Senmurv, like you're gonna find it for sure. It's uh it's open into academia.edu and um yeah, I think that is uh, everything from me uh, this time. Uh, I love your channel, but I don't understand in English. In high school, I only knew how to how to say, can I go to the bathroom? And you know what? That's the only thing you need. Uh, but um, the Spanish streams, Luis, are on Thursdays. That's, um, I do this for my English-speaking audience, which, uh, I mean, it's there. I know you which are there, and I know you appreciate the, the bilingual content anyway i hope you have enjoyed the the stream and the take on the sasanians and again it's just so confusing because there you have when you go to the to the list of you know when you play against the uh ai they are given names of historical figures in among the persians uh among the persian historical figures was uh mahmoud ghazni which is a person from the 11th century but also you have a sasanian um figures it's like it's really a very wide mixture of everything covering from the second the second century after common era to the 11th so it's just it's really confusing because basically they really strongly base the civilization on the sassanids but then they thought mm, this is not medieval enough but still the main symbol is remains sassanian the language is always medieval and it's just oh you know what is a very big mess the elephants i mean they they the elephants are definitely sassanian thing and you know what the the bison no it's not the byzantines oh yeah it's the byzantines they have the cataphracts and the Sasanians do not. Who who chose that? Like how how? Why don't the Sasanians have the cataphracts? It's just No! <laughs> Awful. Nope. Nope. Well anyway, this is what we have. Ought to love it, but that doesn't mean we cannot criticize it in order to get our historical understanding a little bit better thank you so much for tuning in with me it was a real pleasure i hope you enjoyed it thank you no soy Ross. thank you ever and um yeah i think i think that was a very fun stream and i'm very happy that i did it um if you are here to practice your listening but you want to hear me speak about the same on thursday in spanish don't worry that that's what we're gonna do so i will see you on thursday at 7 p.m uh central european summertime the zesta that's a peninsula area like if you from spain that's the peninsula time uh it's been a great pleasure from me and i'm looking forward to sharing more things with you through all the weeks and uh yeah thank you to all the people who swallow thank you for the subscriptions and thank you my beloved patrons you have my back and it's because of you, Bacha, all of you, that I can continue here week after week, stream after stream, Persian after Persian. It's been a great pleasure and remember, remember to create, remember to explore and remember to have fun. Until the next time we see each other, I shall beat you. Khodafes! <laughs>